Mota Dutabanakus. See, welcome into another short episode of the worst fantasy show. It is rookie draft season in a lot of dynasty leagues. So I thought I would come in and give you guys a quick uh, update on some undrafted free agents that I am targeting in all my leagues immediately after your dynasty rookie draft is over. So this is actually one of my little tricks that I use because I traditionally always trade away a lot of my high-end picks for proven players in Dynasty. And the way that I replenish my rookie rosters is uh, I'll, you know, hang on to third and fourth round draft picks and use those. But also I will attack undrafted free agents like crazy after the draft, especially a lot of leagues. The fab budget resets at the beginning of the regular season. There is no reason for you to have a single fab dollar when you get to that point, then if it resets. So make sure you know your league settings. Even if it does not reset and your fab is for the entire year, traditionally dynasty leagues aren't going to have a lot of waiver action during the year anyways. So I would be willing to spend at least 70 to even 80% of my budget this year specifically because there's a lot of undrafted free agents that I really like. And we'll get right into my five favorite ones, starting with Tyrone Tracy Jr. I already had a tweet, uh, you know, that I sent out that was the closest thing I've had to going viral for my little account. Uh, but it got a lot of traction. A lot of people. You are my number one guy. A deeper league. Tyrone Tracy is going to get drafted. If you're in a league with savvier uh, league mates, there's a possibility that he gets drafted um, in that kind of late fourth round. So, you know, make sure you know your league and your league settings and everything. But in shallower 10 to 12 main leagues, Good chance Tyrone Tracy Jr. is on waivers uh, post-draft. So make sure you put in a competitive bet because he has probably the clearest path to playing time uh, being drafted by the New York Giants. He's only got really Devin Singletary ahead of him. And he's the former wide receiver, and he smashed the combine. 4-4-8-40, 6 8 one on the cone, and 4 6 on the shuttle, plus he dropped a 40-inch vertical. So I love um, everything about Tyrone Tracy's game. And I really love the landing spot and opportunity he has with the New York Giants. Ding, ding, ding. What do we have for Johnny? Next up, Frank Gore Jr. Out of Southern Miss. 5'8", uh, 201. Plays a lot like his father. Uh, you know, the incumbent Frank Gore that... Uh, Famously played for the San Francisco 49ers. Frank Gore Jr. finds himself drafted uh, with the Buffalo Bills. So he'll be competing with Ray Davis, who was also drafted for the backup job. Uh, but again, you know, Frank Gore being, I think he's 22 years old. If you are in need of a running back stash, a guy who could potentially get uh, carve out a, you know, a featured backup role or a starting job in the future, maybe two, three years down the line. This is exactly the type of player that I'm looking for. Uh, obviously, also with the pedigree of his uh, father's namesake, I think will give him a little bit more leash, possibly landing on other teams with other opportunities in the future. Uh, but yeah, I really like Frank Gore Jr. And even you can see maybe he ends up beating out uh, Ray Davis for the backup job, and it's a one-two punch of James Cook and Frank Gore Jr., uh, which would be really funny. Oh my God! Wow! Number three, we'll actually go with a tight end here. Eric All. Everything is all right, son. Because Eric All out of tight end U, literally the only reason to really draft him, uh, he's out of Iowa where they just produce effective tight ends year in and year out. He also happened to land with the Cincinnati Bengals uh, where he has a big opportunity behind only pretty much Mike Gesicki. Uh, so he definitely could find himself carving out some uh, playing time even this year, but potentially taking over that role in the future. And again, this is these are deep cut stashes, undrafted free agents that you're just throwing on your taxi squad or on the very end of your bench. Uh, and you're looking for guys with a path to a starting job. So I, I do really like Eric All. And again, 
you know, Tyrone Tracy Jr., Frank Gore Jr., and Eric Hall, these are not really deep cuts. These guys will get drafted in your deeper leagues. So I just had a 16-man draft, for example. They were all drafted in that league. However, in my 12-man leagues, all of all three of these guys were guys that I had to go and um, put in waiver claims for. So some of those claims are still pending. There was a league uh, where we did the draft, the rookie draft really early, and I just attacked the undrafted free agents like crazy, and I got 11 guys. And all three of these guys that I just mentioned were on that list of 11 guys. So, again, it varies league by league, but make sure you're being very aggressive uh, at attacking the undrafted free agent market. I said, oh, damn. Number four for me is going to be Bub Means. First of all, I just love his name, Bub. What's up, Bub? And then he makes your team a little tougher because he just makes it a little meaner. Uh, but no, Bub Means out of pit. This is a strong kid. 6'1", 212. And he ran a 4-4-3-40, 19 on the bench. And he lands with the New Orleans Saints, who frankly have an opportunity in that wide receiver room. You talk about Chris Olave's entrenched as the starter. Rashid Shahid, as much as I like him, is a wide receiver two or three. And A.T. Perry, uh, who people also like, was an undrafted free agent. So Bub Means could very well end up being the wide receiver two on this team given time where you have Chris Olave as obviously the primary wide receiver, but then as the other X receiver, you have Bub means, and then moving Rashid Shahid around. Um, I'm not really familiar with Shahid's game, how much he plays out of the slot, but I, he's just like the faster guy. And usually um, it ends up being, but you know, if Bub means ends up being like a big body in the slot and soaking in targets, like even better. Um, but I just really like his name, his game, and I like the landing spot. Now you get the next one, baby, and we're back. Not that we went anywhere. Not that we went anywhere. Number five is the complete opposite. I love everything about the player except the landing spot, and that's basically the only reason he's being undrafted, and that's Isaiah Davis out of South Dakota State. He is a patient, well-rounded runner. I had him in my top 10 rookie running backs. And the only reason he is going undrafted is because the New York Jets decided to select him randomly after they already had Braylon Allen and obviously already have Brees Hall. Now, there is an outside chance, and I'm talking slim. So if I had to put you know betting odds on it, I would say 10%. But there is still a chance that Isaiah Davis, especially out of the gate because Braylon Allen is so young, might honestly just be a better running back than Braylon Allen. And if he locks down that backup job to Brees Hall, he's going to have some value, especially as a handcuff. But potentially, like if God forbid anything were to happen to Brees Hall, I actually think it's Isaiah Davis that could like emerge as a true running back asset for the New York Jets and for your fantasy squad. So if I'm I'm betting on someone, it's going to be Isaiah Davis, who just last season led the FCS uh, in rushing yards and touchdowns. So I really like his talent and potential. Just again, it was a really, really terrible landing spot for him. I'll just really run through these honorable mentions really fast. Uh, if you need quarterbacks in a super flex, Joe Milton the third for the New England Patriots or Michael Pratt for the Green Bay Packers are excellent backup options that I would just throw on the taxi squad. Uh, Milton basically will be competing with Jacoby Brissett for the backup job behind Drake May. And, you know, in a, again, a weird, wacky world, it is the New England Patriots who have famously had a six round pick ascend to being a starter and MVP and the GOAT. Just saying, the fact that they've had that history, I'm. it just means that they could be willing in a world, again, in a crazy world where somehow Drake May doesn't turn out to be what they thought. Obviously, Jacoby Brissett's not the future. Joe Milton has a cannon of an arm and he can run. 
And Michael Pratt is just like a solid, well-rounded backup quarterback for the Green Bay Packers. So if you're drafting him, it is very exclusively as like injury insurance. Um, I would not spend very much on him, but I'm intrigued by Joe Milton. Uh, for running backs, Cody Schrader, just a workhorse, lunch pail type of guy that landed in San Francisco. So, you know, Kyle Shanahan loves those type of guys. Dylan Johnson has nice size and speed uh, coming out of a smaller school, landed with the Tennessee Titans, who, again, uh, I'm not 100% convinced uh, Tony Pollard and Ty J. Spears are really like, you know, true starter running backs. So at this point, it's just guys that maybe eventually have a path to doing anything. Uh, Jawar Jordan for the Houston Texans. Uh, Jacob, and now getting in the wide receivers, Jacob Cowing for San Francisco was probably the highest drafted guy on this list. And yet because of the wide receiver room being so full and obviously because they drafted Ricky Pearsall, I find that he's often going undrafted. Um, even in the 16 team league that we just did, Jacob Cowing size and landing spot and opportunity seems like everyone's down on him, except for a shout out to, I think it was Nick script has them as a, my guy. Um, so I've been picking them up, scooping them up, just throwing them again on my taxi on the very end of my bench. Uh, but Jacob Cowing for San Francisco 49ers. I also like, uh, Anaya Smith of the Philadelphia Eagles, Jamari thrash of the Cleveland Browns. Ryan Flornoy of the Dallas Cowboys, Cade Stover of the Houston Texans, former teammate of C.J. Stroud, and Jared Wiley of Kansas City Chiefs. I mean, maybe he learns from Travis Kelsey for two years and eventually becomes a starter. Who knows? And the last one I'm going to give you guys is special teams, special players, Joshua Cardi of the Los Angeles Rams, six foot two, two ten. Uh, you know, the Rams have a big hole at the kicker position. They use the supplementary six-round pick. He's going to be competing with undrafted free agent Tanner Brown. So if you are in a league uh, like my 16-teamer, for example, and you are in need of a kicker for some reason, hey, who knows, right? Special teams, special players. But that's it for me. Stupid kick that subscribe button. Hey, if you guys have ideas or questions for the show, stuff you want to see, especially in short videos like this, Hit me up at Jack Loosely on my socials or send an email to worstforcechannel at gmail.com. But until the next time, I'll catch you all on the flip side. Oh, that was terrible, Todd.